Are you fighting AI inertia? Here's your action plan. I think we've all seen it. Maybe you have even done it. You buy this expensive treadmill, and then you swear this is the year you're going to get in shape. You set it up in the living room, but three months later, it's just there as a $2,000 clothes hanger for your laundry. This is exactly what's happening with AI in companies right now. They bought the expensive licenses, they installed the software, but just like the dusty treadmill, it's just sitting there unused because of AI inertia. Meet Sam, who's a dedicated department manager, and he's staring at his dashboard that looks like a flat line. Despite the expensive AI purchase and rollout, his team's adoption is near zero. He's walking past a team member, Maya, and he sees her manually entering and summarizing two-hour meetings from the messy notes that she's taken, struggling to find the key decision points. He knows that AI could do this in seconds, but when he asks Maya why she's not doing it, she says she's waiting for the official policy to make sure that things don't go wrong. This is the reality of AI inertia. It's not laziness, it's just a freeze response caused by fear of making a mistake in this new undefined uh, area or landscape. So Sam realizes that while he's waiting for perfection, his competitors are already sprinting and his organization is losing ground every single hour. So he's determined to fix it, but he falls into the manager's trap, which is when he decides to build a massive comprehensive AI implementation roadmap. He spent six weeks drafting these complex flowcharts, holding committee meetings, and creating a full binder of governance frameworks to predict every possible risk. He presents this binder to the team, but instead of excitement, all they see is dazed looks because the complexity overwhelms them. It makes the team even more afraid to touch these tools. While Sam was busy perfecting the plan, the market had shifted again. New tools are released and the perfect roadmap that he created is obsolete by now. The team has decided in the meantime that it's safer and easier just to keep doing the things the old way rather than navigating Sam's complex processes and bureaucracy. Frustrated and exhausted, Sam is heading to the break room for a cup of coffee. And there he bumps into Arun, who is a new summer intern. Arun is trying to figure out how the coffee machine is supposed to work. Sam looks at this and he's not handing Arun a 300 page coffee operations manual. Instead, he simply points out to the button and and watches as Arun presses it to make a good cup of coffee. This is when the light bulb goes off for Sam. He realizes that he's been treating AI like a dangerous explosive that must be safely handled. Whereas he should actually be treating his team and AI more like Arun, guiding them and training them to use the tool effectively. You wouldn't lock an intern into a room for six months and ask them to study the theory. You just give them small tasks and watch them fail, correct them, and let them learn by working. So Sam rushes back to his desk with this new mindset. AI is like a digital intern, and you got to give it slow tasks, small tasks, so that people can learn by doing and not by reading big policy binders. So Sam scraps the massive roadmap and introduces a start micro kind of phase where he asks the team to treat AI more like a new intern. Arun. The instructions are very simple. Pick one repetitive low risk task and like summarizing an email or drafting agenda items and use AI for that single task for five days. Maya decides to use AI solely for first drafts of her client updates, treating the AI output like rough clay that can be molded later and it's not the final product that it produces. So because the stakes are low, like just like giving an intern some practice assignments, the fear of breaking the company is not there anymore and the anxiety disappears. 
By the end of the week, Maya has actually saved two hours of work. And for the first time, the flatlined dashboard shows a tiny upbeat. If you like this one-page handout of what we're drawing right now and all future videos, please sign up on my mailing list. For help picturing and telling the story of what you're doing with AI in your organization, please reach out. Now back to the video. As confidence of working with AI tool grows, Sam is ready to move into the next phase of scaling, but things don't go perfectly there. Murthy, who's another team member, asks AI to summarize a compliance law, and AI starts hallucinating. It produces a regulation that doesn't even exist. In the old culture, this would have caused panic and a ban on the tools. But Sam handles it differently, more like a mentor correcting an intern. He says, good catch, Murthy. Now we got to introduce some verification steps in the process. Sam turns this failure into a lesson. He's adding a fact-checked AI to the team's best practices recipe book. They start even holding 15-minute show-and-tell sessions on Friday, where the team starts to not only share their wins, but also these failures so that everybody can learn together. The culture shifts. It shifts from waiting for permission from the boss to do anything to let's responsibly experiment. This is where spotting AI mistakes is seen as a skill and not as a crisis. Now the team is fluent in managing the intern, if so to speak. Sam wants to push it to the next phase, which is identifying patterns to build long-lasting systems. He notices that half the team is using AI to answer the same exact five questions from clients about pricing. So instead of everyone prompting it individually, they build a simple shared knowledge bot, which is trained specifically on those five questions so that they can handle the volume automatically. Sam looks at his dashboard again. Now the flat line has turned into a hockey stick growth curve. It's driven not by top-down mandate, but by bottom-up discovery and experimentation. By treating AI adoption as a series of human experiments rather than a tech upgrade, Sam has essentially turned inertia into momentum. If your AI dashboard does not show any action, stop creating roadmaps and big AI strategies. Just guide your people like you would guide an intern. Ask them to start with small micro tasks, expect mistakes, and let them learn by doing. So identify a good set of micro tasks that won't cause any big havoc if something goes wrong. And trust your people to make intelligent decisions on their own as they get the freedom to use more and more of the AI tools. Thanks for watching.